Okay, I'll call the meeting to order. It's 6.30. And our first um, order of business is uh, CRPC Director Jen is here to visit. Uh, give us a visit and let us know what's going on. Yes, come on up. Don't you, yeah, feel free to come. This is Jessica, our other um, board selectman. And Miles is on the phone with us. Oh, nice to meet you all. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> brought a couple of things with me. I'll just kind of pass them over to Caroline and share out with you. Okay. Thank you. So I'm just trying to make, make the rounds to all the communities in the region um, to touch base. Uh, the goal is to touch base annually with each of the communities. Um, so just by way of introduction, I'm Jen Citizen Director at the Stratford Regional Planning Commission. Um, just guess to get a feel for your knowledge of us as an entity. Are you familiar with the Regional Planning mm -hmm. Commission and what we do, our roles, responsibilities? Not all of them, but yeah. Okay. I'll give you like the the fifty thousand foot view there. Um, so, as a regional planning commission, we're funded under state statute. Um, there's eighteen communities in our region, so we're not just Stratford County. We've got a couple of communities from Carroll County and three from Rockingham County. Um, so, the regional planning commissions, as formulated um, across the state, don't necessarily follow county boundaries. Um, we just have the County is part of our name, and it gets a little confusing sometimes for folks. Um, we also serve as an economic development district, and that is a designation under uh, EDA. This is a federal designation. Uh, and the, thirdly, we operate as a metropolitan planning organization, and that's the federal transportation designation because the region is of such a size and has urbanized areas within it. We are then designated as an MPO. There's four MPOs in New Hampshire. Um, so, just kind of really quick, so each community under statute has uh, representatives to the Planning Commission. Uh, by default, all communities have two representatives, and then communities that are uh, larger than 10,000 or 25,000 in size have additional representatives. Um, we currently have zero representatives from Rollins. No, you Wait. have one. You have you Jessica. Jessica. Oh, yeah. that's really new. That's brand new. Okay. Yeah, only a few weeks ago did she did we get that form signed I for did her get an email from someone. You did okay yeah. so maybe you got something from Shana. And while I was putting my notes together, um, she was out today mm -hmm. and so didn't have updated I wasn't able to get updated info from her. Um, so that's good to know but we'll make sure we um, do still have a vacancy though. Yes, yeah. we do still have a vacancy. So um, it's great to have somebody there um, just to kind of give you a little bit of explanation the commissioners serve in multiple capacities both in terms of the regional planning commission the economic development district and the metropolitan planning organization i know it's kind of a lot to digest and if i had to draw a diagram which i was attempting to do last week it's very confusing <laughs> um, but that said um, the commissioners as the regional planning commission and the economic development district meet quarterly um, the next meeting is december 5th um, and that's usually a thursday um, and then the commissioners, plus, plus a handful of other uh, partners, serve as the Metropolitan Planning Organization or the MPO's policy committee. And that body meets monthly on um, the third Friday of the month at 9 in the morning. Um, and just to kind of give you an example, like last week we had our policy committee meeting and the communities around the table uh, had some questions and concerns about the decision making uh, for grant funds at the Department of Transportation and asked us as staff to on their behalf follow up on that and get additional information and request that that decision or request that the application be able to appeal that decision. Um, so it, it's an opportunity for you as the community to have a little bit of a voice uh, or more of a voice at that state decision making uh, level by kind of joining forces with your neighbors uh, and using us as the planning commission to be that conduit for you. Um, so it's definitely a valuable thing to be at the table and have your voices rep represented there. Um, and you are entitled to those votes uh, to represent the organization. How many, how long are your, uh, your meetings usually? Um, Friday was unusual and we went two hours. It was, I think, one of the chattiest, most robust dialogues we've had in quite some time. 
typically, um, for the policy committee meetings, typically an hour to an hour and a half. Um, the commission meetings are an hour and a half. Okay, and we schedule that so that we get those in an hour. Yeah. Um, amongst the commissioners, seven are selected to be the officers and serve as the executive committee. The executive committee meets monthly right before the policy committee. Um, they're my supervisors. They work to um, help set the budget, uh, provide that financial oversight for the organization. We've been working on a strategic plan for um, the organization, help set some direction. They set personnel policies, things like that, on the, the administrative side, uh, and provide that oversight. Uh, so that gives you a little bit of a, kind of a synopsis. Our technical advisory committee, that is uh, an advisory committee to uh, our MPO policy committee, that's typically town staff that will come, uh, folks that work day to day in the transportation universe or in the transportation project realm. Um, so just wanted to kind of give you some highlights of some of the things that we've been working on recently and hear from you some of the things that we might be able to do to better serve your community uh, and make sure that we're all on the same page and helping each other out. Um, I know that you are one of our communities that subscribe to our MapGeo database, our online platform. No. No? Did you guys pull out? We still have your data in there, though. So, so you do, but yes. now it's old data. And, okay. And so the reason for that is because it was intended to provide full assessing information yes. to assessors, That's and then it got confusing because it looked like okay. assessing information but it lacked um, a footprint, it, it lacked yeah. square footage, which okay. they always want. And so um, we spoke to whoever it was that was managing that program at the time that we subscribed, who I believe is no longer with you. We've had a little bit of staff turnover on the GIS side. Um, and so the response we got at the time was that it wasn't able to accommodate more data fields to include square footage. Oh, okay. So I don't know if that's changed. So you, is that the only thing that you really to add into it, the square footage? We can look. That, that was the primary difference, um, that was the primary piece of information that was missing to appease um, the people who typically want to access that information. Yeah. I can't say that that would include, that that would mean that Matt Geo had then all the data yeah. that they would want, but that was the breaking point. But that being said, it is a fabulous program Yes. that, you know, it would be nice to resubscribe to at some point if, you know, if it became um, up to date and could in include yeah. those data fields, that, you know, for butter notifications and for the right. different district overlays and things like that. I would caution on using it on a butter notification for the challenges is we don't necessarily have the capacity to be updating it on a continuous Well, basis. right, the math and lot numbers, yeah, yes, but piece. not the owners necessarily. Yeah, yeah. right. Yes, most definitely. Okay, and that's something that we're talking about internally about how do we better um, offer that platform as a service to communities. And um, right now, just for background, we had communities and the way it had been set up was that the communities that wanted to host their tax parcel data or parcel information on our regional platform paid in a share of the annual licensing fee for the, um, for the software platform. Um, and so we've got like this hodgepodge now across the region where we have some communities with, with parcels and others without. Uh, and one of the things we're talking about and we want to look at is just the feasibility of um, having at a bare minimum parcels for all 18 communities as a base service and then providing that additional access to like the tax card information or that, that deeper dive into the data that as the add-on um, because it's um, we're charged based upon the amount of information that's plugged into the system. Oh. So that's how the pricing structure is. So we, we figured out a way that, you know, the communities that wanted to have that incremental additional information like you have now, those will be the ones, and then we can at least keep a minimal amount of data as a base service to all communities as part of the dues. Um, so that's one of the things that we're looking at. So I don't mean to. That. That's okay. I, I don't mean to pull you too far into the weeds, but that's really intriguing. So I'm wondering if you're, if are you suggesting that we could give you map data, and that map data could remain um, interactive, and that we could have assessing data on our own site that could link to the map potentially. Yes. So what we've seen um, in other other regions that have utilize a similar platform is depending on who you have for your um, assessing service 
uh, you can dynamically link to your um, parcel, your tax cards um, through their system. So it just be, we create a link within the, um, the data structure. So it's, it's getting beyond my technical expertise, but that's yes. something we can look into. SQL probably. <laughs> I do okay, okay, I'm okay. Okay. It's, it's there's there's an issue with um, and I'm not going to get it off the top of my head. Uh, there's one of the assessing uh, companies in New Hampshire that does not interface with third party platforms, um, and then there are the others that do. So it's parsing that out, and so as long as you have one of those. Um, the, the ones, ones that would, play. The ones that play, that play nice, it's, it, they're able to connect. Um, so it makes it interesting. So it's something to, that we'll be kind of thinking about in the months to come. And, and before we get to the software renewal is July 1st of each year. So before we get to July 1st, we'll hopefully have a kind of a reformulated plan of attack there for how to package that um, service. So excellent. All right. So that's the, that's the big GIS piece of it. We do have a new GIS planner, um, as we mentioned, uh, who's jumped right in and picked up where our prior one um, left off. Uh, who she left just, she had been previously working in academia. She had been more back to her prior university where she had been teaching. Um, unfortunately, she wasn't looking. They just offered her a deal that was too good to, <laughs> to say no to. Um, so we do miss her dearly, but uh, we're fortunately able to bring someone in um, to kind of quickly get up to speed and, and jump right in where she left off. So um, that worked out to the fortunate. Um, Along the GIS lines, we are working on a new project in collaboration with Rockingham Planning Commission, looking at uh, drinking water sources across the region and what some of the potential threats to drinking water supplies might be. We have a source water protection grant from the Department of Environmental Services. So as part of that, we're doing a whole series of base maps for all 18 communities in the region that will highlight um, source, you know, like I said, source water threats and opportunities for protection. Um, so those we'll be working on over the course of this winter, and the staff is kind of knee deep right now and kind of setting those up and getting, getting rolling. Um, I know we've kind of worked in the past and had some communications about MS4 permit in the past. Uh, we kind of chatted with um, Paul, who I guess has been putting some of this stuff together for you on the side. Mm -hmm. um, Kyle in our office has pulled a bunch of the information together for him to identify uh, the various um, uh, waters, water impaired waters uh, and the mapping components so that they can complete the notice of intent. Um, we will, uh, we have one of our interns has stayed with us over the winter. He's a current student at UNH and he'll be sticking around hopefully next summer and we'll likely have uh, at least one additional intern to help with field work and data collection. So um, helping with uh, MS4 outfall mapping is something we can definitely chat about if that's something that the town needs. Um, our new GIS planner, part of the reason we selected him is he has prior experience working on the MS4 permit and the GIS sides of that. So, which was a very good, uh, fortunate kind of grab for us. <laughs> so, um, let's see, just a couple bigger pl picture planning things that are coming up over this uh, winter and into the spring. Uh, we are required to every five years prepare a housing needs assessment. That is to be a resource and tool for communities uh, when they do their the housing chapter of their master plan. Uh, for us, we do a look at exactly that where the housing needs in our region. So looking at supply demand um, and what there is and what we need in the region. We're doing that simultaneously with uh, an update to our comprehensive economic development strategy, and that's part of our EDD. Uh, obligations as well as the update to our long-range transportation plan. Uh, so because we're doing these three larger planning uh, updates simultaneously, we're going to be packaging some of the outreach that we do for those into a single um, outreach process that touches upon all three planning areas uh, simultaneously so that when we reach out to different organizations or municipalities or bugging you once, not three times separately. So uh, we tentatively have planned right now a workshop on January 10th where we'll be inviting municipal staff. We want to get your local perspective on what some of the needs are that you're seeing within your communities. Mm -hmm. 
so that's something to kind of stay tuned, and we'll be sending out an invite there. Um, also, on the environmental and economic development side of things, we just received a new Brownfields grant. Uh, so we have 300000 to do assessments over the next three years. I knew we, under our prior grant, had completed an assessment of the old town shed. And I know James, who manages that project, will likely be following up with the town just to hear a little bit about what, what the plans are, if, uh, any opportunity for redevelopment. I know that there was some chat um, when the assessment was being done of kind of some vision or ideas for that property. We track leverage. Uh, EPA uses that to justify continued funding for the program. So it's important for you, us, and EPA uh, to keep track of that, um, what happens after they make those investments. Um, on the transportation side, the 10-year plan, uh, gas at hearings have recently concluded. Uh, we've been out there. Uh, actively engaging in that process for the commu all our communities. And Rollinsburg does not have a current project in the proposed 10-year plan, but uh, Colin, who manages our transportation programs, was uh, reminding me that um, we, with DOT, um, worked with students from the University of New Hampshire who did a capstone project um, looking at the intersection of Four, Roberts Road, and Bear Road. Um, and so I know we need to kind of follow up, figure out where, where students left things off and revisit that final report because the next kind of step in that process is we can work with the town to help you identify the proper funding source through Department of Transportation and the federal programs for any uh, needed improvements. So that would be a next step that Colin can assist with on that. That would be great because so. we continue to get residents reaching out with yeah. inquiries about the status of that. But Bear Road is the only town road at that intersection. You, okay. Roberts Road and Route Four are state roads. Okay, and that's so that's a little for... extra challenge there. I think as long as you got You're working talk. with the larger intersection of the state roads. Well, I, you the know, programs will work. well, the federal program will work, but we need DOT and the town on the same oh, page yes. at the same time yes. about what's going to happen there and making sure that's the project of the year when the time comes for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yes. Nonetheless, there's there's always the different funding opportunities out there. Um, so, like, CMAP is just wrapping up, so it's a congestion management air quality. Um, a program and a, a lot of different projects, if there is a congestion component to um, the needed improvements, can get funding through that, and there's a few other different sources that we can look at. So there's still hope then, even though it's not on the 10 year? Plan. Yeah, that we could look at the programmatic opportunities, so see if, if it would fit into one of those programmatic buckets. Those are the, the, the more competitive rounds, but those they run. Um, more frequently, and there's generally a greater chance of getting a project completed sooner if you can find one of those buckets that a project is eligible under. So, so who would apply for those? Though is it the state or is it us? Because it's state road. It'd be the town would apply um, under the, the yeah. So a lot of these like, programmatic ones, you'd have to have somebody in town who would manage the project, um, but you would get federal funding through the state to complete. The local project is how it would ultimately work out. Why would the town be the ones responsible if it's a state mandated maintenance the primary, road? Well, the pri yeah, right. So yeah. the primary problem we would say is Route Four, and yes. the other, you know, the other roads intersecting to Route Four. Yeah. So the suggestions were modifications to Route Four, right. which we would have no jurisdiction over. Right. right. So, and that would be, it would all depend on the funding source and who's going to manage the project. And so that would be something that would be the, that conversation with the town and DOT. So some of the programmatic thing, items, the town applies and the town is then the one who manages the grant funds and, and the project. Um, most of the traditional 10-year plan projects are state managed unless certain circumstances when they're not. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. details. It would be so. nice to talk to Colin about yes. that and um, I'll have him follow up. Because part of what he'll also be doing um, for the long range transportation plan is a project solicitation. So at a minimum we'll want to like start writing up the project and putting that together so we can put it into at least our long range transportation plan because then that's kind of a placeholder 
Um, we like to think of the long-range transportation plan as that conveyor belt that feeds projects into the 10-year plan and then ultimately the transportation improvement program, um, which is that four-year funding program. of the big big items in a nutshell that we have going on right now. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything that you would like to know? Any questions that you have for me? Um, no, I don't have any questions. I don't have any questions except um, to just let you know that um, the planning board, perhaps in conjunction with the zoning board, mm -hmm. um, would really love more training. And I, I spoke We've to somebody about, about that. Once yeah, we had time. talked about yeah. that before. Um, so. so I just wanted to revisit that okay. and um, maybe discuss potential topics and things like that. Okay. Miles, do you have any questions? No, okay, thank you. Okay. Um, the other thing to do, uh, the other thing just to let you know is that. Um, our master plan. Uh, okay. We're not alone. We know, you know, lots of people are out of date, and we're out of date too. Um, so it's something that the planning board is starting to okay. discuss, um, and it's not really on the 2020 radar, except to sort of narrow down what we're going to do about it. Yep. Um, but I'd love to talk to you all about Definitely. how you might be helpful with that. Definitely. Definitely. Um, and then beyond that. Uh, just received an email today from staff of Plan New Hampshire, who manages uh, New Hampshire Housing's Municipal Technical Assistance Grant Program. And it sounds like they're going to start doing those grants on a rolling basis. Um, so rather than one of those individual competitive rounds. So that's another resource to keep um, your eye on. Um, those funds. Uh, they're typically for zoning, subdivision, site plan amendments uh, that in some way, shape, or form help um, address local housing needs or other, uh, it might allow you to incorporate other things as well and need to look a little bit closer at, um, at project eligibility information, but that's just a new, a new update on that program. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Good. Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming in. That was yeah. really wonderful. Yeah. And it's great to put a name to the face. face. I, know. <laughs> I know. I know. I agree. Sorry, that was so hard to schedule for so long. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. It happens. So. Fully understand. I appreciate it, and I was glad to be here. Well, thank All right. you. All right. All right. Well, thank you. Thank Have you. a good, good night. night. You too. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, we'll go back into our meeting and comment about uh, community input. No. Okay. Consent calendar, which is the approval of November fourth regular meeting public hearings and ordinance changes. Any questions or any no. changes? So we're going to set the question. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, so it didn't include minutes from the meeting? It didn't include. So we meant to set the tax rate on the meeting? No, it didn't list. You can add that if you want to add that, but it did not list that. Oh, He's asking the meeting for the setting the tax rate. I didn't list that. What What is the date? Um, it was the 8th, I think. It was a Friday. Oh, you mean in the morning, that's right. It yeah. was, last, was it last Friday? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it was the Friday before this. It was the 8th. So it was the 8th. It was the 8th. It was the 8th. Yeah. Okay. So we can do the approval of the minutes for November 4th, 8th, uh, regular meeting and the 8th of the tax setting meeting, and public hearings for the um, town road ordinances and transfer station. Is that clear? Is that right? Yep. Okay, how about you? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so uh, consensus that we've approved those. All right, department heads, okay, well, George, you're the only one here, so we will welcome you to the table.
appeal for Liberty International to put an airbag on the front of the big truck. They had an issue last week uh, with an operating it was a, an electric component that was failed, so we had to send it to Liberty, which is $311.27. And which vehicle is this? It'd be truck to a big international big dump truck. Okay, that's not coming under warranty or anything? No? Sure. Just check in. Four years old. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it's a safety issue. Is it the light safety come on? Come on? No. It's not the them. airbag per it's not the airbag for safety. It's the airbag that keeps the truck level because it'll wing on it. Oh. I See? that too. Oh, cool. Isn't okay. that cool? All right, yeah. then. It wouldn't be a warranty issue. Uh, no. Okay. So, well, that's how we do that. Uh, purchase order 1779 to Liberty International to repair the airbag that keeps truck level for $311.27. All right. I'll second it. Any discussion? No. Miles? Okay, that's me. All those in favor? No, 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 no. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> okay, that's fine. All those in favor say aye. 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 I don't have a PO, but truck, the uh, 550 is going and it's got a heater that, that for the definitely fluid, the uh, stupid fluid for the uh, wheel is not working and there's a solenoid also on that truck to do it. On the parts, I don't know what that's going to be. It's going to be on. I should be on the $500. All right. Giving you a heads up on that one. Okay. And Bob has asked me to bring forward these signs that he had talked about coming, using the federal money that we got for the snowstorms. Mm -hmm. I got two POs here for various items. Okay, so there was some questions about the what? What would barricade? Barricade. Yes, barricade. Yes, barricade. It wasn't even on there. Okay, so you're going to make barricades, but these are for. So just explain okay. when you're doing the POs what they are for. Okay, the PO for $564 to uh, toollots.com, which is a company that sells traffic cones, which is, you can get a lot cheaper than we would have got to with Connell signs. 12 going to each department, so there's 36 cones, you're going to buy 12 for each department. Okay. And that PO is for five hundred and sixty-four dollars. Tool dot com. I don't know which how you gotta that. Well, what do we out. we gotta put some description in here? Yeah, I, I okay. Traffic cones. Traffic cones on that one. And how many total? It's Thirty-six total. Thirty-six total. All right. Purchase order 1710 to toollots.com for 36 traffic cones for $564. Okay. Any? Okay, so this says, oh, this must be shipping or something. Yeah, okay. Yeah, got it. Okay. Um, so any discussion on the, on the um, cones? No. Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Passed. Uh, we can get next day shipping for two thousand dollars if we want. If <laughs> <laughs> anyone's in a rush, we can wait on the cones. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's great. They airlift them. I can't believe the shipping. It's crazy. Yeah. I want somebody to ask me to ship out one of the models I made. Mm -hmm. For me, fifty bucks. I said, uh, if you want to pay fifty bucks, I'll send you one. Yeah. It is ridiculous. All right. Yeah. Do we keep this paper with them? Yeah. Yes, there you go. Alright. So there's another, uh, for various signs, the, the tr no truck signs, uh, flag man ahead signs, road post signs, one lane roads, detour ahead, road work signs. Mm -hmm. uh, various road signs, not just, also some uh, no parking downtown when we are doing projects. He had a couple of them made and mm -hmm. accident, emergency scene signs. Okay. So there's a PO here for $4,612 to auto signs. That was more than we had talked about, wasn't it? It is. How much, is, how much did we get? 
You've got um, I mean, around seven thousand oh, dollars. It's just I more than it was, he had said he was going to spend. Yeah, because um, hmm. it's a five sixty four too. So we're talking about so it's, it's like it's a, a little over five thousand dollars total. Yeah. Um, all right, well, let's put it up and then we can talk about it. Purchase order 1709 for various signs in the amount of $4,612.74. All right, I'll second it to bring it to the table. What are you, what are you feeling about it? You got the money for the signs. Got to buy signs. Well, we didn't get the money. We didn't get the money from this, for the signs. We get the money for FEMA. Right. What's that? He asked how many signs. How many? I'm looking. 10, 14, huh? 16, 20, 22, 24. 24 signs. No, that can't be right. Yeah. I think I missed a page. 8, 10, 8, 16, 18. 12 signs. See, I can't read my calculator. Some, well, mm -hmm. the 12 signs are some, like the, the supports, like the back supports that you got to buy everything separate. Yeah, okay. So, oh, I see, so, yeah, okay. The stands. Yeah, you gotta yeah. get the stands. You gotta get the stands and, okay. Yeah. Right, but then, so well, do we have, like, do we have no signs right now? Just, like, we have, have the folding signs, we don't have many. We only have a couple work signs, and that's about it. And the one I see is the road closed. Right? We have the wooden road closure signs. Yeah. These are, uh, the roll-up signs that we can Okay, so there, there's a, it was five, four, three, seven, fourteen. Now it's four, six, twelve. Is it because you removed the cones? Correct. Okay. So this is also putting us. This is also putting the no trucks for our new. Um, on the on, um, town roads. Town roads. So, um, and like a flag man and a road closed and one lane and work ahead is like one of those that pops up wherever you are. Right. Um, and then, what's the arrow one for? Like the detour. Like those ones. Oh. Like we can put them on a cone. Okay. Like when we close a road down, we can put it on a cone and flip the sign one way or another, whichever way we want the arrow to be. I see. Okay. So yeah, because, okay. And then there's parking ban in effect is um, one of them, and emergency scene ahead is another one. It was one of those create your own word. Two of each. Yeah, two of each, yeah. Okay. As long as there's enough money, in, and that includes freight. It's, it's, it's oh, yeah, the $201. Okay. And this one, did that include freight? Yes. Yes, okay. Um, can I say this? Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks. Long term, won't shipping be recalculated? Because you just subtracted out the amount for the cones. Oh, for right? the cones, but not the freight. Yeah, that it will probably, probably be less, less. So but that's not to exceed. It's okay. Pur you know, purchase orders reflect an intent or an authorization yeah. of an intent, okay. so they can be approximate, and it's okay. Okay, so we'll we'll add the totals on the uh, PO once we get this approved. But um, there's a list here, and this is ours to put with us, right? Okay. So there's a list here. So any further discussion on this? No. Okay. So for the purchase order 1709 for 461274 for the signs to be coming out of the funds from the uh, FEMA money received. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion passed. That's to Econo signs, I don't know if I said that. Yeah. Okay. Okay.
George is asking me if I've done the rebudgeting, which I haven't because um, I've been preparing for the default budget and revenue conversation for tonight. Um, he's looking to get some things done. So oh, that lane too? Oh, whatever. The lane tool and the cover the bins. Cover the bins? Recycling area. Recycling area. We've got to cover. We're supposed to have that stuff covered. Okay, did we talk about that already? Yeah, it was all part of this. Project. Oh, that was all but part of it. But he hasn't presented POs yet, so. We got off the PO until just I get the PO for tonight. Oh, I, I thought we had. A, I thought we already approved the lean to over the to store. We didn't have the PO said he wanted to hold off. We oh, talked about it. I think okay. it's the last meeting. Okay. Oh, that's... But you, you wanted to get the figures. Well, I, I want you know I do want to see get if we have the money. That doesn't mean that they're you know if they're fine they get to to decide that. Um, how, you, you had pricing for the lean-to, you didn't have pricing at the time for... And originally, you didn't have pricing for the, uh, the roof trusses and stuff. I didn't have right. those, but I have them now. Okay, so what's the whole picture? The whole picture is about 7000 for both. Okay, so um, I really would like to know where yeah. we are yeah. budgetarily-wise. Um, I, I mean, maybe we can get it for next week. Oh, for sure. Okay. You know. If you don't, if you want to leave that with us, and then we can. If you're not coming next week, I don't know if you are well, or not. I'll come in well, next week. Not right. Can you give me the breakdown? Um, I did break it down. Some of the some of the screws and stuff okay. that hold the metal is included in the bottom figure. It's just the sheet metal and the metal uh, and the trusses on the car. So it's twenty seven hundred dollars. It looks like for the transfer station Roughly, yes. roofing, which is the more immediate issue to protect the mm -hmm. recyclables. Mm -hmm. And the lean to is for protecting the equipment. equipment. That's that's yeah. you know forty three hundred. Okay. Um, thank you. Yeah, it may not be that total amount, but that was miscellaneous for both. Miscellaneous for both buildings. Okay. All right, let's, um, hopefully we can, well, yeah, you're probably right, we're probably not meeting next week, so it would be the first week of, uh, the first week of December. Which is um, getting tighter with weather. These projects we're going to do either way, but okay. uh, we'd like to get, I'd like to get the puddings in for the lean tool before for us. We could get the pillars and just do that part of it and at least get that before too long. Okay. Pillars can. can't be that expensive, I would think. Uh, I got it. It's, it's based, I got it all priced out. So. My guess is that you have the money in your building maintenance um, for we get at, least at least one of those, not both. Mm -hmm. I mean, we might be able to, we, depending on the rest of the meeting, both like we might meet on Monday just for a quick meeting. Because um, we need to know what that default is in terms of conclusions on that, too. Right? Well, yeah. you could potentially do that tonight. I gave yeah. you a new copy of the budget, so it's yeah. up to you how far you okay. get with it. All right. It's $410 just to do the uh, precast. Uh, I think we'll meet next week. You would? I'd rather meet next week than go like four hours tonight. So Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to too. So. So. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll definitely confirm it by the end of the meeting. So it's another rebudgeting conversation because you're going to have to find money in the operating budget for the remainder of this year plus mm -hmm. for the beginning of next year. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The money out of the operating budget would go toward the purchase, so it decreases the price of the purchase mm -hmm. if you choose to put it on the warrant. Just that you said machine, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to wait until we do the rebudgeting just to make sure. I'll get it, you know. Um, was it again, George? This is the proposal he had um, for the sidewalk yeah. machine to uh, lease one and then the lease of. Well, actually, it's to buy a used machine, but it. They're going to let us lease it. Yeah. And 70% of the lease would go back towards the purchase. Yeah. What was the cost of it? 57, I thought. 
so that's what I was saying because they couldn't get one this year. Okay. 57,790. The least the monthly rental would be 2,500. Okay, so you're saying that doesn't include a sander? That's right. That's, the sander would have to be something we'd have to purchase later on. Oh, but not necessary for immediate. You they can make it. One. They can't get one in hydraulics for this machine. Oh, 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 okay. So they can't get one. They, okay. They're a six month backlog on Oh, okay. So. Okay. I don't know if you probably said this last time, but uh, this is a used machine, right? Mm -hmm. Does this company that's offering this, do they come up every so often? Mm -hmm. Or is this a pretty rare event? The good ones don't come out too often. I mean, oh, yeah. this is like UNH's return. This is a return. Oh, right. They, they just they turn over after every 100 miles. Every so many years, mm -hmm. they replace them. Yeah. So he had, they got a couple of good ones that came in, and he brought that to our attention. Got it. So he does, they do come up more often, but this is a good good. Yeah, I mean, version. there's not too many out on this machine. This got is, it. Uh, this is the same place that he rents his um, when he, excavator. His excavator um, cool. When he was doing this. So. But I thought that would be a, you know, a better option, not having to spend the ninety thousand or whatever it would have been. Mm -hmm. Twenty thousand dollars cheaper, but you have to find five thousand dollars right this away. year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then another. It's about four months at least with December, January, February, and March. You're like, no, by March. If they'll wait until December, then if that's twenty five hundred dollars this year, that's better. You still have to find. Um, Seventy-five hundred dollars out of next year's budget that, we haven't budgeted for. that you haven't budgeted right. for, and you can end up with a default budget. That's right. the bigger. That's the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Well, we just have to return it. We didn't have it, right? I mean, well, right, but so well, so so there's two things about it. Happen, so. There's two things about it. You can put it in the warrant that you're going to buy it. But if the warrant doesn't pass, yes, you've spent all this money out of operating budget for a machine you don't get to have. Mm -hmm. um, then also, if your operating budget doesn't pass, then you're in a default budget, which means you're in a reduced budget. You haven't budgeted for the $7,500 that you just spent. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can word the warrant article to try to get that money into the Warren article, so as long as the Warren article passes, you're fine. Mm -hmm. But if the Warren article doesn't pass, then you have to find the money out of the operating budget, um, which you haven't budgeted for if it does pass. And if it doesn't pass, you're just um, in a tighter budget finding the money. So it's, it's challenging that way, but it's a savings of $28,000. Well, it won't be that once you buy a sander, but it's still a significant savings. Yeah. It's, it's the kind of thing that you were saying before, Denise, like it's not a savings if it's an expense we wouldn't expend otherwise. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, <laughs> there's that. Mm -hmm. There's a couple projects that we're not going to be doing this year, too, so that's money that's not going to be used. Can you quantify that for me? Can you, like... Um, we won't be getting to cricket money. And the big project and the culvert down on Sligo will not be this year. Oh. I know, but where is that money set? It's in the public fund, right? Well, maybe, maybe not. Um, we put money. A lot of it was out of road, road money. He was going to do, you know, remember, you know, paving took care of most of the pa of the road resurfacing budget, the major projects, and then he came back with a sheet that said. We want to do these other things mm -hmm. with this leftover money. Mm -hmm. So now he's saying that he's not doing all those leftover things. So, but you can't buy equipment with road money. <laughs> well, you can move the money around if you want. I mean, that's a board decision. I mean, the board can decide to do that or not to do that. Yeah, the road money is not restricted like it used to be. True. Right. However, if you want it again yeah. year after year, you got to be careful what you do with it. That's all I'm oh, yeah. saying. Yeah. So. Is, it, is it possible to make all of our lease payments this year for the for four months? Um, I'm sure they won't reject it. Well, the thing is that we don't have, we don't know if we have. Well, but I, I can yeah. get that to you in pretty short order. Yeah. You have to meet again to decide that that's what you want to do, but. Um, that's a good option if you can find all the money this year if you want to choose to do that. Well, then it doesn't, yeah. It yeah. doesn't put us at as much risk. 
It's not as much risk. You still have the risk that the Warren article is not going to pass. If the Warren article doesn't pass, then, yeah, then you got use of a machine. You just rented a machine, I guess. You can look at that that way. Mm -hmm. But are we renting on a premium because we're expecting to get 70% back towards purchase price? Mm -hmm. Oh, not, a, not for a monthly rental. No. I mean, we're paying, what, $2,900 a week to rent this excavator. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> okay, well, you, that, that's good. By that's renting good. it for the month, you get, actually, you pay three weeks. Yeah. Is what they, so you're actually not getting, you're getting yeah, a pretty discount. good price. Yeah, okay. So what's changed that makes us think we have to do this versus what we've done previous? What's changed that what? says that we have to do this versus what we've done before? What do you mean have to do? Well, if if this is why a big is deal, thing? why is it a why is it a the machine? Yes. The machine fits the sidewalks. I know, which but this but, one doesn't. Okay. The one we have does not. But it it's worked before. Not every sidewalk gets done. Okay. Because part of them don't get done. How many? They can't. All I can do with, with this machine is the main street, and some of that area is tough where the sidewalk is rough edge. Mm -hmm. We can get the pass around slide, uh, start field, however, if the ground's not frozen, we're taking up the lawns on both sides of it. Mm -hmm. I can get Locust Street, but it's tough to be falling off the curb all the time because the machine's too big. Mm -hmm. I can get in front of the stores down on Main Street. I cannot do the sidewalk coming up. I can't. Any of the other sidewalks off, like South Street and all them sidewalks. So you're saying you haven't done them before, so... The only way we've and done it before is take it to back or we pull all the snow off at one time. But I mean, when we, that's when we get a chance to do snow removal. Mm -hmm. But we can open up more sidewalks and treat the sidewalk. And of course, we won't be able to because we can't get the sand for it this year. But that was a, the plan was to be able to treat sidewalks also. I mean, and that machine will also relieve a lot of the hours on the backhoe because we don't have to use the backhoe for every project we do. It, you know, we're not going to be running around with that, and also the skid steer, of course, would be staying at the transfer station. How much is the standard cost? The sand is about forty-three hundred dollars if. If they when they can get them, it won't be this year though, or or th this winter. Unless they can, unless they have, they have them in hydraulic and they have them in electric. I don't know if the electric ones are available. They're all in the same price range anyway. But the whole equipment cost in the CIP is eighty five thousand dollars, and that's going up a little bit because of mix, that was what last year's price. By next year, it's going to go up about ten percent. So it'd be close to nine nine. Any further discussion? No. Miles? No, okay. Thank you. All right, so I guess we'll see what the budget shows and okay. we'll get back to them. Yeah. All right. Um drainage of cohesion, are we talking about that at all? Um, just the update that the Legion approved the idea of the drainage, so um, you all have, I understand. Yeah, the ditching bucket probably won't be here until the end of the week, so we probably won't get the machine until first week. But we're going to get right on the project, so we can but do something. But hopefully it doesn't freeze. Well, we can get with the back, we can do part of it with the back, or we can start the project and at least get started with it. We can't get in the back of the, those buildings with the back, because it's too big. Mm -hmm. Okay, and do we have a non-public? If we want to continue to discuss personnel. Do you want to continue I, discussing I, I, personnel? I, I didn't know. We haven't, I haven't got an answer yet. That's why I was On what? The okay, are you saying you want to go into non-public? I guess, yeah. Well, we'll All right. <laughs> so we have to go to non-public for, for RSA 91-A colon 32A for personnel. The town administrator, whoever, contacted each one by phone or by email and asked them how they felt about something. 
and they just bonded and they didn't communicate with each other. They just looked like that. Yeah, and, and people oh, lived down to on the right right. house. Mm -hmm. And the administrator then went and made a decision based on what the majority said. And people were like, well, people were like, like, well, like, 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 like freaking out, saying, oh, wait, what was this private meeting? Because someone mentioned the decision that we made. And people were like, what decision? What meeting did we make this? And they're like, oh, the phone call. And all oh my God. Not that I want to do that, but like. It's legal. It's not a good idea. Right. Yeah, that's what I thought too. <laughs> okay. It was actually just, um, they were trying to choose the next one in time. It was like something as innocuous as that. And then it just flipped. That's really interesting. Okay, we're on camera. Yes. You want to? You're on. It's a business I don't think, Carol. Well, <laughs> so do I. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, let me start with a couple of things. Let me just start with this one first. I'm going to keep two of these for myself. Between Danny Tuff and I, we've probably spent 25 or 30 hours the last week. This is a 10 year total of all the points that it's generated. It's a couple for you, one for you, I'm keeping a couple. Thank you, sir. So you can look over that. It's got an average to what everything is. That includes all the totals for fire calls and for Monday. Well, they're, they're not. Oh, they are. Oh, sorry, I thought there was things up. That's okay. fire calls on Monday nights. The only thing that does not include is detail stuff. And by detail stuff, I mean we have a stuff in book that guys sign in for, like tank truck or any of the vehicles has to go get inspected. So when they come in, they have to you know drive physically drive over there, stay while it's getting the work done, and then bring it back. It was the same thing like the trucks were just the tires were just brought in. You want had to go there for a whole day. So somebody's committed to that. So we have a separate sign up sheet with a separate book that they come in and sign up. The time you started, the time you left. So those are all the hours that we haven't added, we haven't included in it because it's just sporadic. Do you have a ballpark of what you've done for 2019? Oh, it's Is that something new that that's happened versus previous years? Uh, well, or maybe in the last couple of done years, it but. Two years. Yeah. Um, it's, it's probably close, I would say, to 300 hour range at this point. Total. Total. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, what's a point represent? An hour. An hour of work. Yeah. Or for one person. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Thank you. So. That's not there. And the other thing, when we get a little further down the road and we start discussing this, I'd also like to see. I'd like to have a little more there just for flexibility so that I could man the station when I need to. Per windstorm, hurricane, snowstorm. So if I want to put three guys on and keep them there for 10 hours, they're going to get paid from that detail work type thing. But basically, it's all the same plot. But didn't, don't you do that now when right. they're there? On a winter storm, don't you give them points for the I amount do. of hours they're there? So it's not anything different than you're doing now. It, no, it's not. Oh, it's just okay. coming out of a. It's, it's tracked differently only because it does not come out of. Because it's not the same thing. It's not as an far, incident. It's not it's an a, incident. It's a potential incident. Yeah. Yeah. So you take it as a detail right yeah. now. Yeah, we call okay. it a detail. Somebody comes in and has to run around during the day of the station to go get cleaning supplies, light bulbs, just that kind of stuff so they come in to run around for a couple hours, well, they should be compensated for that. So if they sign up in the detail book. And when do they get, do they get a point for every hour they're doing that? So it's, so it's paid through the same it function. Is, but it's just categorized it's different. differently. Okay. That's the only thing that's not in that. Okay, point. but you're saying approximately 300 hours. To this point, to this year, yeah. That's not this year, next year. I mean, potentially. potentially. Okay, yeah. all right. And then, like I said, you know, for, for those kind of incidents. I'll get more and more of those where I ask for people to come in. Mm -hmm. If I know ahead of time, you know, the hurricane coming up the coast and mm -hmm. it's gonna happen, okay, I need to go out and like, ask folks who are available and what we can do with it. But it's more so, I have more of an issue with it, with the snowstorms, just because we have such a lack of people that live in town mm -hmm. that can get there in any sort of timely fashion. So it's better for us to keep them right in the station and typically I try to man an engine with three. I'm right down the street, I'm not gonna go anywhere, I'm gonna get there. Mm -hmm. But I have somebody there, so by the time I shovel myself out, I would go clean my truck and get there. Mm -hmm. Doors are up, and they get ready to go. Mm -hmm. So just so that we can beat that response curve and have people ready to go. Otherwise, who knows what they're going to do. So when
when you have these pe these um, people in there doing station cover for events, such a major event, exactly. is there something that they can do in the station to keep themselves busy, or is it just hanging? No, no, they're typically okay. they're going to make sure all the equipment's ready to go. Uh, a lot of times I'll have them they're doing some reports or there'll be some sort of project in there that I can sign them okay. so they can do something. And then they're just not in there hanging around. Okay. There's going to be something they're going to accomplish while they're there. Okay. So, but, okay. you know, maybe that's two or three hours worth of work, but if they have ten hours, they pull out the couch, get off the car, mm -hmm. you know, get there overnight. Get some stuff. Yep. Ready to go. Okay. So the other thing that we do when we have that, that there's a change from our normal response, is when those people are there, there's a snowstorm, we listen to what the rescue company or the ambulance is doing. Mm -hmm. And we change the response plan. So if they come into town for any reason, they go. We go. And we, we go with not only an engine company or whichever vehicle needs to go, we go with a plow. Because we got such an older group of folks that live in our community, they're not keeping up with shoveling sideways, sidewalks and what stop, going into their house and not clear. So we will respond with that to open it up and work with the ambulance company mm -hmm. to better get the folks out. And the one time that I can say, well, that was one thing that we had done that was it, it saved a life was uh, Ozzy's wife. Because it was already each of the snow on the ground. He came home and found her. We were at the station. They took the plow over, opened it up, and got in there and got the CPR started on her. And that's why she's still in this time. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't happen if we weren't there. Mm -hmm. So I can already know that the system works. Mm -hmm. So typically, during a snowstorm, we might be busy in the beginning, but typically we're not until near the end. And then we start running like crazy because, you know, people are out and things are happening and whatnot. But the ambulance stays busy. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll come into town during the storm at least a couple, three times. So that's the reason why I try to be a little more proactive on that and not have to wait until we get folks in the building. So that's the only other thing that would affect what numbers you see on that paper. Okay. Okay? Yeah, thank you for joining me. Yeah. Okay, I got a couple of POs that I want to submit. I don't have the invoices yet, Caroline, because uh, they're in route. <laughs> so you can have these, but I'll let you know when I get it in that and we can square off with these folks. Uh, one of them is I discussed it uh, the uh, protective clothing uh, to some of the members that I wanted to get squared away with that uh, during our annual two or three people that we give them to. Uh, she's coming in next Monday night to measure our firefighters. There's three of them that are going to get the gear. That I explained is one of them that lives right in town. He's within a month of finishing his certification, so he's going to be all set to go. So she's going to come in and take care of that. And the other two, uh, Tyler Penny, he spent a lot of time with uh, Elliot Fire. He's come over and helped us. He joined us now, so he's not a uh, uh, very viable guy, so he's getting new gear. He's my size. He's a little bigger, so it's not like we can go upstairs and find him gear that's going to fit him correctly. Which, when we get new people, we kind of go through the old stuff and try to make it fit. Not the best way to do things. So, like I said, she's going to come in on Monday. And as I discussed and I looked through my budget, there's just there's right about $3,000 off of the protective equipment line, which covers one. I'm not going to buy any holes, which covers two. And in the equipment line, is four thousand dollars in this will cover all three of the sets of gear out of the budget of which we have now. Okay. We're not going to be deep for any else, so it's in there. It's just all coming out of that one main line. Okay, I move purchase order 1761, departure in protective clothing for three turnout coats, three bunker pants, and something else, FFs. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye.
with the change of season, we had uh, last week, or the week before, we had the folks start getting ready for the winter time response mode, which includes gas meters. So we have three different types of gas meters, old, older, and oldest. That's how we classify it. <laughs> well, the oldest one is no longer operable, unrepairable. So one thing I try to do is update all of our equipment that have one engine and the other engine have the same equipment on them because the engines are interchangeable for the most part. I don't want to be swapping stuff from here to there to that to this because it just creates a lot of confusion. So engine one's our primary piece. It is set up with all of our newer gear. Sometimes if we don't have quite everything, we'll swap something over, whether it be a thermal imaging camera or the meters or whatnot. And again, like I said, I'm trying to get away from that. We're not going to get another thermal imager just because we don't have $20,000 for it. But the meter failed, so we went out and purchased a new Quattro 4 gas meter. And by a 4 gas meter, the main reason that we use it is for seal calls, of which we had one today, so it's kind of ironic. Um, and it also monitors LEL, which is explosive levels, if we go into a gas call, so we can see it before it blows, you know, we can measure it before it blows up on us and whatnot. So we had to replace that. So this is the equipment line. Again, there's enough money in that, even with the gear end of it. We ordered the new equipment for that. It's $725. It's sitting on my desk. They're calibrating it, putting it in service time. So engine one and engine two will have exactly the same meters when they leave. We're going to start picking up those calls on a regular basis just because of the time of year it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've already started 1762 to fire tech and safety of New England for a gas meter in the amount of $725. Okay, I'll second it. Any other discussion? No. Hearing that, all those in favor say aye. 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 All right. And the thing that we're looking at the station, I'm probably going to be buying some of this. Uh, probably our last major purchase for the year is SCBA bottles. They have a 10-year uh, <clears throat> shelf life, very similar to the year. We can squeeze a little bit more out of them. They have to be hydro, which means they have to be tested every year to make sure they'll hold the pocket pressure. We had had them start going through them tonight. You have four of them which are out of date. And you have to look at the manufacture date. And when they go past that 10 year mark, you can use it for one more fill up and then they won't be refilled anymore. So we have three bottles that are at that point right now. They're about a thousand, no, they're about 300 bucks a piece for a bottle. But we have two line items that I haven't got anywhere near a touch yet. One is SCBAs. And the other one is uh, on Scotty packs. So if we, we get to that point, we can purchase those. The month is there, those two items. They're still correlating what I need as far as what we need to go buy. Okay? Questions? Can we go too fast then? No. What kind of bottles are they? Kind of what? Bottles. SCBAs. Yes. Self contained breathing apparatus. They don't have oxygen in them, they have air in them. And every time you read the newspaper, you hear it on the news, they say, oh, those are, those are oxygen tanks in there. I literally have always heard that. I didn't know it was there in them. You know why there's not oxygen? You know why there's not oxygen? You can't breathe oxygen. Not in, not in that kind of form because it's too concentrated. Right. There is oxygen, but you're breathing only 21%. If they put that in a bottle, you'd be breathing 80 or 90%. You wouldn't last very long. That's a good point. But the other reason why it's not in there is oxygen is an accelerant. So if you had a leak with your air pack, which is common, it's going to be spewing raw oxygen into a highly flammable atmosphere, and you just accelerated the whole incident. Mm -hmm. So most people, I just giggle every time I hear it. I, I can't believe it. never thought of that. But no, the stuff that we get now, and actually it's in our CIP to get a filling station yeah. for us, which is still in the works. Um, we go to Summersworth and we'll get a night fill in some bottles. It goes through a system where it's filtered, gets regulated, and then it gets put into our bottle. It's 4,500 pounds that we carry on our back as far as the pressure and all that stuff. When they get down below the four mark, we have to get it filled, because otherwise you don't have the same amount of time to spend in a building that you would if it wasn't totally capped off. So, so that's the other thing we're dealing with, is we're turning the corner to that, too. So. Okay. This I'm going to leave with you to peruse, but I want to explain what it is. We had talked about the I am responding. Mm -hmm. okay. This is the sub subscription agreement. We had two months for free, which we're coming to the end of. Mm -hmm. This year I filled out some of it. 
and basically it comes to you. What we're going to do by our choice is you have a choice of getting it in one, three, or five year terms. I've chosen the five year term because the one year term, if you did it annually, month, you know, year, year, month, month, 860 bucks a year. We can go to the five year term and cut that down to $650 a month. And we build annually. A month? Well, excuse me, a year. year. We're going to go from 860 to 6 Okay. So we're going to save two hundred ten dollars by going to five year thing, mm -hmm. and that's because now they know they've got you locked up, so they give you a discounted rate. Did you budget that? This in the next year's budget. Yeah. For for this membership. Yep. And what did you budget? The that lower fee. That lower fee, because okay. I knew that's where we were going. I didn't have this in hand until like three days ago. Okay. But when we were talking with these people and getting a the quote, they said if you go to that, that's your best deal. That's where you want to go. So that's been. Can we obligate money for five years? It depends on the language of the contract. Okay. And that's so, kind of what this is, so you can see that. Basically, what I was going to do as far as budgeting it, it's not going to. We always have that one line item that's super gray area, and it's one door what they charge us for our dispatching mm -hmm. fees mm -hmm. because we don't know what that is until they send us a bill. And right. Sometimes they raise it and sometimes it stays the same. But basically where I've taken this money and plan to use it is from the line item for the radio equipment that we have mm -hmm. where we were going to buy the portables. We can still fit two portables in there every year. This this will fit in that. Okay. So it's not going to be an addition anywhere. It's already built into the budget as long as we stay at that 15 which is in there for the next few years while we catch up on the portables that we want to purchase, mm -hmm. this can fit right in there. So it doesn't need a line item. It's going to come out of the radio equipment line, which is basically exactly what this is. Is that what you want to see? That's where I'm using it It's from. not inappropriate. I, I don't see a problem with that. We talked about this a while ago. Because to take it out of this equipment? No, the radio. radio. Because, the radio. because it's a communication fine. system. Exactly yeah, right. I remember talking about this. Yep. Okay. All right. You know, I just don't know why we wouldn't put it as its own line. I mean, we could definitely do that. You can take the money from one and put it in there and have its own line. It, it's all about what you're trying to show and, and whether you need to show it and what you're trying to accomplish. Um, you know, you can get reports for whatever, you know, whatever's in a line at any time. It, I'm not it's questioning just, him, I'm just trying to make sure that there's no surprises down the road with the public and the budget committee. I told and it's you, not, I told you, not, not we have other doing what the, Well, sure, like we have other combined lines and the point is to be concise. This is and, like, it, it, in my opinion, I would have put it where the dispatching was, added to there versus your radio equipment line. Because it's not equipment, it's it's a service, right? I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's sending out a page like your dispatch would. The only reason I didn't go is because that is just like, like I said, it's a wild card every time as far as what we're going to do. Yeah. So it is not to the point where I can say it's going to be this every single time because mm -hmm. it's going to vary. And I know what it's going to be now and I know it's going to come mm -hmm. out of this item and I already know that where the funding is, that's there. Rather than keep having that one be the wild card, let it be the wild card. We can control this other cost and we know right where it's going to come from. Yeah. That's my thought. Yeah. If that's not, still, you can put it wherever you want to put it. I mean, it's bottom line, it's the end of the bottom line of the budget. I mean, I get that. I just think that... To my mind, it's kind of like the other areas of the budget where we have other tabs with calculators mm -hmm. where you can see this is how we've comprised mm -hmm. and calculated the budget line. It's just like any one of those because if you have a, you know, a separate budget line for every single you no, know, expense, I know. then you get this extensive, extraordinary budget and that's unnecessary and burdensome, mm -hmm. you know. But everybody will have a different view about what's the balance between, you know, having a budget that everybody can see and understand and, and what is concise and readable. If you, yeah, if you feel strongly that you want it on a separate line, I don't mind that. Or combined with other dispatching services. I mean, it, but, I mean it's okay. We can still it's pay it from wherever well, we want to pay it and budget differently for it for 21. You know, yeah, like, I'm, there's always... Yeah. To move money from uh, radio to dispatch. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Just move the money there, so because it's it's like a dispatching service. I know what you're saying about yeah, Dover, because I mean, we really don't know because they don't tell us until after our budget yeah. has gone through. And you know, yes, it's a dis. It's such a you know, play on words is how we want to say it. Because it is a dispatching thing, but it's more of a notification thing. Not so much anything like the dispatch. This is cut stone. This is where you go. This is when you go. This is what you're going to do. 
this is allowing us, you know, a little bit different notification. And I just wanted to show you guys because you haven't seen it. I have. But you have. Yeah. Well, I'll pass it around. This is my phone. Everybody's got the phone. So we had a call out, out today. And then before we had this system up and running over a month ago, I didn't know who was coming. Mm -hmm. I had no way to know until I got to the fire station and saw who walked through the door. Well, now, and I've got all the members pretty much on board, and when we get a call, they all receive this. And right down here in the bottom, it says respond now. There's that little red button. Mm -hmm. Well, you push that little red button, and it comes up to a little wheel, and you can roll that wheel around as to I'm available, I'm unavailable, I'm delayed, I am responding. So what they'll do is they'll bring that up, put responding, mm -hmm. and now, as you can see right here, you see all the names? Feel free, yeah. feel free to um, check it out. Do you know when this was last updated, the app itself? Because this old um, radio wheel is like, see how it's so small on your phone, yep. the app itself? Yep. It means that they haven't optimized it for the latest like iPhones, and that makes me worried that they won't support it in the future. Oh, I, well, I'm not sure. That, I mean, I'm not the super computer geek and all this kind of stuff, but uh, they seem to be right on top of all this stuff. Right? Oh yeah, everyone's super community at the... Okay, okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's we got cool. communication. Yeah, it, well. okay. it really makes a big difference. That's really so cool. Yeah. had it, that's how come I've yeah. seen well, it. Yeah, well like today, I was sitting in a, at a funeral in Worcester Mass today, and we had a call. So, you know, I'm sitting there with all my confiders, we're attending the bar services mm -hmm. today. So, I'm like, well, I really need to look because I need to know who's coming. It's a different day. It's 11.30. And, and we've discussed before, the miles between four is when it's critical as to us having a man. Mm -hmm. Well, it's good. And I scroll down. And, oh, Danny's coming. He's still at eight. Ooh, I got Tanner Hoffman coming. That's a good guy. I got Josh Hoffman. That's a better guy. Mm -hmm. So, at that point, I'm sitting 70 miles away, but I know that the station's covered. There's people that can hear my call. Mm -hmm. Where sometimes I wouldn't know that if I was on the rail. I'm rolling the dice and shooting in the dark. Mm -hmm. So at this point right here, it maybe gives me, you know, not as much gray hair as quickly because now I can <coughs> see what's going on. Because the other thing with this also is if I didn't get it, the dispatch would pay just out a second time. It's like, okay, we got to get a call. Maybe I don't have enough people coming in. So our alternative is to call mutual aid. Mm -hmm. But the problem with that is for a CO call, which is not considered a critical type call, you can't be calling mutual aid for that. If you continue to do that, you What's a CO call? Oh, oh. Got it. You know, your little detector, and you don't tell Yeah, I know a coward. I, I was what thinking it, it would abbreviate something. <laughs> no, CO, we call it CO call. That's mm -hmm. why we get dispatched to it. But the thing is, if I didn't have anybody coming, I wouldn't have a big problem because I know Joey Rousseau, you know, South Burns chief, would come right over. But the issue with that is if it continued, and I know their town manager over Their taxpayers are augmenting our needs. That's not going to go very far. And that's abuse of the mutual aid system. If we were to continue to do that, it would become an issue. So that's why I've constantly said we're getting closer and closer to you. Some sort of dedicated way of having people be able to respond. If it's either on a per diem basis or on a call basis or something, for those hours to prevent that. This is the first step towards getting me more comfortable. But normally I leave from wherever I am. I couldn't get there too good from Worcester, so I didn't put myself through that. But that's what it looks like. Uh, cool. So you were just had it for a day now? Or? <coughs> About a month. Oh, so you must really like it then. It's it's made some, some very good innovations for us, where all the members really like it. And the thing we're doing now is we have a small screen that we're mounting right above the radio dispatch room. So when you walk into the station, if you didn't have your phone or you didn't want to play with this button, the screen is going to be right there while you're getting your gear on. So now you know who's coming again. You can formulate, all right, I need this piece. This guy can take that truck. This guy can get on that truck. You can start formulating your crew assignments right away. Cool. So that's another good thing for us. Let me see if I can find this. Because we still use our old, our old way of being dispatched. But they also, not only does it give you that information, it's going to give me a dispatch scenario. Roll FD, wire down. Rollins Ford NH0 Rollins Ford. That's a lousy one. 
Does anybody know what was wrong with that one? Tell my ass. <laughs> didn't tell me <laughs> where I'm going. Very took far Okay, so <laughs> hey, I got a call. I'm going to a wire now. Well, it's, you know, it's not yeah. a huge town. Just drive around and look at the wires. <laughs> there's, a lot, there's a lot of wires down. There's a lot of stuff down. So, I mean, we're still cleaning that up, and that comes from dispatch. All SD. Investigation. Arch Zero out of jurisdiction. That's not a good one either. I'm trying to find All a good one. Trying to find you a good one so you can understand. So are those dependent on what sort of information the dispatcher has? Exactly right. And, we're, and yeah. we're working with uh, dispatch. For Roll FD. Structure Fire 177 Central 8. Central 8. Well, we don't have a central app, so. It was Dover. Yeah. yeah. All right. I know where we're going, but yeah. somebody yeah. that's unfamiliar yeah. with the system would not know. So we're still working out some of the bugs. But between knowing who's coming and this information, mm -hmm. it's helped to clean us up as far as being able to get our responses. So, who, getting out of the how equipment. is that getting there, though? Is it Dover Dispatch calling, uh, sending something to I Am Responding? I Am Responding sends it to Dover Dispatch. It's very similar to that if you had a call box on the street or if you had uh, an alarm system in your house. Mm -hmm. It rings into a central station someplace and then they notify the dispatch center. Oh, okay. So that's just, this is the same kind of so system. So you're, you're point number one, and yep. then point number one is going to go to Dover Dispatch. Goes to Dover. Okay. And then it's called a CAD system, which is computer-aided dispatching. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're having the problem right now. Some of the older dispatchers are fine. They'll type in all the information. Mm -hmm. And once they do that, then it comes out in that voice message mm -hmm. correctly. Mm -hmm. They just type it in raw at the club and they're done. Mm -hmm. Why? Why do they care? It's Rawls for their employee mm -hmm. by the city of Dover. Mm -hmm. So we're working through that to like, no, we're paying you very good money. Mm -hmm. We want these messages correctly so that I know where we're going. Mm -hmm. and, and it's getting better. So I just wanted to That's end. the first time they've dealt with that system too, yeah. right? So well, I mean it's not yeah, something exactly, that is before. Because we had to uh, you know they and they spent $1.1 million and upgraded their whole system a year ago when we went through all that. Remember when I came in, that boss says, hey, we need $40,000 for all this, and then we work our way through it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, their CAD system was supposed to have been state of the art. No, it wasn't state of the art. It was just something that they had to do. Mm -hmm. So they were working on that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
every year there's a cover sheet that yeah, says okay. how many yep. incidents are in there. It doesn't so tell you how many hours, but it tells you how many incidents. Okay, incidents. so that's good. Yeah, so that's how good. many employees is this getting broken down by? Is that something that's that something we'd have to go back and look at every call as to how many were there. Well, no, no, no. I just mean how many, how many, yeah, how many people were on the rolls in that quarter or in that year? I don't think you need to look at how many responded per incident. Just some general data of how back do you want him to go? Two to three years, even. I think that's that, as far as I, like, I don't think we need to go back to that. I don't think you need to go back to 2012 forms. or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm talking about. I do. But the more data we have, the more we can project averages so we can project so that well, we can create something. How many names are the roles for an annual basis, and that's basically how much we divide up. That, that's, that, it. That we that's it. That's it. I mean, right now it's 24 members on the and what does that include? Does that include all of your officers? Or everybody. is it okay, including yourself? Okay, so twenty-four members right now. Yep. And is that your lowest or is it That's the cap. I don't want I can't go any more than that because I don't have enough equipment to manage. Okay, because you used to be thirty years yeah, ago. Yeah, can't okay. Go that far. So you're saying now it's twenty four members as your cap. That's okay. pretty much where I'm keeping it. All right. I could add a few more. But, you know, you know as well as I do this twenty four. Oh, that 24 is really good. Yeah, I know. I hate to use the term any really good, but reliable, dependable, and I'm there. They get They have some that I don't always like to say, well, I'm going to fire part of them. I'm going to constantly <laughs> talk to them. Okay, so. Coach them up to why they're supposed to be here. So. Okay. But like I said, it's, it becomes more of a, an equipment supply type of thing. Before I, I could put 30 people on them. The 30 sets of gear. Yeah. Yeah. And the air packs, we only have 13 air packs. So I can have 20 guys show up. Mm -hmm. I only have 13 guys that can go and build. Mm -hmm. But there's enough other stuff for us to do. Okay, no, that's so, fine. So you, you're. I mean, you can look at just. Half is 24. You can see how the totals change so much. Like back in 2013, for whatever reason, we had like 8,000 points that year. So that must have been an extremely busy year with multiple storms or something that run that high. Because mm -hmm. our average is somewhere between 42 and 46. Is the number of points that we 4,200, 4,600. As you break that all down, I mean, we did it by quarter to try to give you an idea. Uh, you know. Okay, so if I look at 2012 and I see 5, 58, 78, that's 58 and 78 hours. Yep. Total hours. Yep. So, yeah, you're averaging that. That was a bigger year, and then the next year was good too, and then the, the others are like. Five and four thousand. Yeah. And that's the cyclic part that you're never ever going to know. You cannot predict that stuff. So okay. that's why we gave the average and yep. kind of flip along with that. So on the amount of calls, I can go in the book and look at that. And this is this is um, fire fire calls. This is one meeting a month. Mandatory and one mandatory. meeting, I mean, one not training mandatory. Yep. That's what this is yep. only. Yep. Okay. Exactly. You understand that mandatory yep. stuff. So yep. I, mean, I can't put a word mandatory on it unless it's something that goes with it. Mm -hmm. No. Nope. Nope. Still. Nope. And then the detail is, is not included in that. No. Okay. Look, like I said, the detail covers just the normal business type things you need to do to keep the department running. Okay. The behind the scenes stuff. Like, like to fill in air bottles tonight, but I got the department there tonight. If we had to fill these air bottles on a Tuesday at 2 o'clock, well, that's mm -hmm. considered a detail thing. But it's the preparation to make sure we're 100% ready to respond 100% of the time. Okay. So I'm not preaching to you. You want to be involved. Okay. Those are the behind the scenes things that you got to do. Well, thank you for doing that. That's fine. Yeah, I can't really. Yeah. <laughs> I am. It's all right. And going back to the register books, there's a lot of things we necessary there. No. Well, you know, we went all the way back and got into Kevin's because Kevin took care of this most of the mm -hmm. time. The last few years, <coughs> he didn't do so much because he wanted to deal with the computer under it. He liked his ledger and he did his system. <laughs> so we had to decipher some of that and yeah. pull out the hieroglyphics and then transfer it over and make it work with the one we've got now. So but I've got all that information. Still got the boxes in my office. So if something more that you want to request, we can get it. But you've got 90%, I think, is what you're going to need here. Is there anything else like Oh, then you said names or numbers or calls. I don't think we need names. that. I don't need names. No. Just, it, it's really the amount of hours that I was missing. Um, and I ha I was basing it on 30. So that's good that I know that your cap is 24 now. That's where I did the last yep. few years. Okay, so that's good. 
I mean, if I had four more guys come through that were on another farm property, you know, maybe not, not to put them on. But as it is, we're getting people that want to make their way on the fire mm -hmm. property, so we're investing in them, we're paying them, training them. We're paying for parts of that. Mm -hmm. So that's just the way it's been rolling the last few years. I, you know, like, you don't know Josh Hoffman. You know Josh. Yeah. I mean, he walked through the door and, like, oh, want to do what? Yeah. yeah, yeah, go find him some gear. I don't even need to worry about yeah. any of this other stuff. Retired Dover. He started in Rollinsburg. Yeah. Went to Dover. And started in Elliot. Elliot. Yes, he so did. He's yeah. not retired yet. He's still Oh, he's doing it on his Oh, wow. That's cool. He's had 23 years and once 25. So oh. he's still got a couple more over there. Yeah. I mean, if I had more guys like that walks in the door, you know, there's you'd a find few a, that, you'd a, find a place. that talk that I would, yeah. I would find a place for them. Mm -hmm. You know, either I find another position or somebody that's not there that often is going to have a discussion. Mm -hmm. Those are just the things I have to do. So. All right. Anything else for us? No. We already well, talked about that. Anything else you got for me? No, no. We already did those. We talked about being appointed. And yep. Yep. fire ponds, that's all we got. Yep. The only other thing we want to do, so you're aware, and I know it's always been a positive thing the last few years, is we're going to light up the fire station again, as far as Christmas lights. So, I have a head always on it. I'm pretty for that, and I get that. But most people are very positive about that, because there's not a lot of that around town. Mm -hmm. We're going to do something to brighten somebody's day. Oh, how does your, your lighting project complete? <coughs> it's 100% complete. Yep, and uh, Excuse me. we'll see what happens with that. And it's a huge difference. Yeah, it's already night, noticed. It's night and day in that station. Yeah. They came in and did the offices first, just when I would go in, geez, I'm going to get my sunglasses on. <laughs> and the other thing was, there's a lot of the lights that were on the far end of each bay, mm -hmm. half of them didn't work anyway. Mm -hmm. Now every light in the building works. Awesome. And he also did some other stuff that wasn't really in the scope of the grant. Mm -hmm. Like there was a light outside the, uh, on the uh, baseball side of the building. Yep. There's a light there that lights the flag, yep. as you should have. It should be lit up at night. That was deficient, not working. He fixed that. So anything else that he found, again, it wasn't under the grant, so there's a small building uh, forward to us. Okay. So I come out of the building, but that's fine. There's still, there's what still about the one on the host tower? Does the... Uh Ice it's there, it's, it's workable. It's good. Okay. Yep. Yep, so every light in that place is like good. up and running. Hopefully we see some savings. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's very nice in there now. And the highway's done, so now we need to talk about this building. We're gonna do all these? I mean, it's a, it's a, well, we haven't voted on it yet. If we can yet. find the money. If we can find the money. Or decide how to do it. Yeah. I mean, it. It's not a lengthy project, and basically all they're going to do is they just, they just drop the lights and they replace, they pull the ballast out of it, mm -hmm. and they put a new smaller ballast. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the tubes, you know, normally like this big, the older tubes, they're tiny. Mm -hmm. and they're like four times as bright. So, I mean, whether you do it all or you only do it with the floor or the PE or something, you're going to see a huge difference. In the, in well, the I mean, you are eventually going to see the savings in your, in your bill. So, yeah, so, yeah. I don't see the bill. You, you guys would yeah. notice that. So. But sure. also, it would be good if we could do the street lights too. But that's. It doesn't fall under the same process. <coughs> so we have to do an RFP and some completely um, different process with it, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. Because that would have been a lot. Of, that would have been great. Yeah. You know, yeah. the guys that were doing the work at the GM company, they were very good too. Mm -hmm. you know, they worked well with us because we would have to move stuff around mm -hmm. trucks out of the way. So George was good at coordinating it with us and moving around their scissor lifts and keeping time frames so we had people up there to do it. So mm -hmm. it all got done in mm -hmm. two days. So awesome. Well, I'm, yeah. glad it, I'm glad it finally got done. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, how big a difference can it be, but it, it's pretty remarkable. So awesome. Hopefully that uh, will show the bills to them. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you for that. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. He said, thanks, Mark. He can hardly oh. talk. It's Miles. <laughs> oh. Miles homesick? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. It's a little <laughs> lag going around. Thank you, Miles. Yeah. <laughs> Some chicken soup. Yeah. There you go. See you all later. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. We're going to move welfare to the end of the meeting. Um, Change the battery. Can we have a two-minute recess? To all right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Can you flip it? Yeah. Yeah. I have to take this.
this off, don't I? It's the small a battery and it just had two hours on it. And mm -hmm. you know, it's probably an hour and a half, but don't want to take the chance. And the other one's gonna go. Do you know what size car yours is? How many gigs? No. Sorry, I didn't look at the default budget. Maybe we should We need to put on that. Um, default budget's going to be about 670000 bucks. decide how much money you're going to anticipate as revenue for 2020. So that's what this spreadsheet is about. It has some history. If you look at the, um, the pink column to the left, that gives you what we anticipated for 2019, followed by what we've received through the end of October. Um, the, um, the blue column is what we reported to the Department of Revenue as our revised anticipated revenue for 2019. And then um, the pink column to the right is the anticipated revenue for 2020. So I filled in some blanks which are all open for discussion and you all get to decide what you want to put in these lines. Um, the land use change tax, um, I did not remove, I did not revise this blue column, but some things got revised through conversations with DRA. So, um, for example, the $9,200, um, it, it goes through the general, um, it's, it's from the land use change, uh, the land use change tax account. She kept it there because um, there was not another place to put it when it goes to the general fund, um, but I would not anticipate land use change tax necessarily, but the one thing you might consider with that is um, the 58 acres in, on Bear Road. If, if that does sell and if it does get developed, it's likely in current use and to come out. And so that would be a good bit of money. And, and you know, we don't have to decide this tonight and remember that you also have your opportunity for revised estimated revenues in mm -hmm. September. So none of this is ever set in stone, it all gets worked out when the tax rate gets set. Mm -hmm. um, so they're just estimates, but these are, are things to, to think about. So I didn't put anything down there. Um, interest on taxes, I decreased that um, by $8,000 um, proportionally because the, um, the legislature changed the interest rate for um, delinquent taxes. So I just proportionally reduced it. Okay. Um, business, so, so everything else in that category is, is stuff that we typically do not receive revenue from. Um, licenses, business permits, and fees, um, that's all the same as um, last year. I did um, the other license permits and fees, I did um, just pick a nice round number that was close to last year's. 
Uh, but otherwise, I, I kept it pretty level. Mm -hmm. um, note that the spreadsheet shows the motor vehicle surcharge, which when that's the um, transfer station capital reserve fund. No, sorry, the transportation oh, yeah. um, capital reserve fund. Um, it was considered revenue when it was first created, way over there on the left. Mm -hmm. It's not revenue. It's going into a reserve fund. So that's why there's no, no money. money allocated to those areas. Um, the state sources, I kept those level and filled them out in as much as we know, um, except what you don't have on your um, spreadsheet, which I'm going to add, is um, under the state supplemental, halfway in that block, mm -hmm. $26,000, which we received this year, um, a disbursement from the legislature for um, their surplus that they distributed to municipalities. Do you see that, the state? I do see it, but where are we putting it? Um, in the yeah. pink column, okay. which is the 2020 line. Okay, and how much was it? $26,000. Even? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's not even, but we, okay. can, we can put even. Okay. Um, so we received that in 2019 as unanticipated revenue. Okay. So just know that, but um, next year we have to put it down as anticipated um, no. railway tax. Um, that was what DRA said it was moving toward. It's not much of a difference. And then at the bottom of this category, um, the asset management grant assuming that we get it, we'll budget to receive those funds to do the um, stormwater asset management grant. Okay. Um, the following category charges for from departments. Um, I just decreased, I kept it the same as last year, except that I, I took $10,000 out for Team Camp. I don't know if you wanted to take a different amount out. I don't have that data for what they have been bringing in for Revenue. Kelly threw out, I thought she said, an $8,000 number mm -hmm. um, at a meeting recently, but um, their expense line is more than that, so I just sort of compromised with it. I don't know what okay. you want to I would just it. leave it there, right, for now. Um, miscellaneous revenue, the sale of municipal property. I brought it down, back down to $3,000. Um, okay. Just because I can't, you know, I don't anticipate we'd have... Just one cruiser. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then interest on investments level from our revised amount. Um, so there aren't really any changes. Um, the interfund operating, we don't have to decide right this minute. That's related to um, the capital items and what's coming from reserve funds and which reserve funds. Um, So I need to calculate that, but as you and I discussed, Denise, I, I'm not, I need to look into the fire equipment and um, where that revenue is going to come from. Okay. So I don't have an answer on that. So I don't feel like we need to report on this necessarily because it offsets capital. I just thought it would be a good idea to be able to report to the Budget Committee mm -hmm. um, what we are um, Considering what we think we're what, what we're anticipating to offset the um, the operating budget that we're going to propose. So um, so when you take out the capital items, if, if the board doesn't change anything, and by all means, you know, feel free to adjust anything. Um, we are anticipating um, seven seven thousand one hundred ninety nine. His line died, so he's just calling Hello. Hey there, we lost you. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. Oh, sorry okay. about that. Right. Welcome back. No worries. Um, so we are up in revenue by $7,199 as I've proposed it here, not counting um, capital items. Okay. So um, with that being said, I don't know how the board feels about those numbers. I'm good with them. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Let's proceed with it. Like you say, we're going to have to adjust it as the year goes on anyway, but this is a good estimate. Okay. So, shall I forward this sheet to the Budget Committee? Yeah. Good with that. Okay. I'm good with that. All right. And it's 7199 is 
is how much more revenue that we more. are anticipating. Okay. Increase. Yes. In operating revenue. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you for that. All right. Um, I copied for you a new version of the operating budget. Um, I made some little differences, um, little changes in the um, in the default budget. I just had um, another set of eyes look at it, and I um, I had two omissions. So I corrected those omissions, and I corrected the header problem. You see, there's no header on it. Thank goodness. Thank you. So we got that one figured out. Um, there are otherwise no changes from your previous version. Okay. So um, I just want you to look over the default budget numbers and decide that you agree with them or don't agree with them. Um, typically, so the default budget is that, that olive green column. Mm -hmm. um, those numbers should be the same as the 2019 approved appropriation except for places where we have had um, one-time um, expenses that we know are not going to be repeated, um, contractual obligations that have either gone away or been encumbered. So they're different in that way. So there are a few places where they are different. Um, under personnel management and in the, in the um, area of government buildings, the um, the various insurances are up. Um, the things that we know that have gone up for the, um, the revaluation contract is in the default budget. Health insurance um, is a decrease in the default budget because we know we don't have all of the plans that we had budgeted for. Yeah. So. Um, so that's, you know, the default budget is down $20,000 from last year's budget in that line. Do you have a question? You said this number is 2019 approved budget? Except for any... Except, except for, for some, certain yeah, Why isn't it fellow? based off of 2020 proposed? Mm -hmm. So, so it's a combination, sort of. So you take the 2019, the last approved budget, yeah. and then you make whatever changes based on what you know. So you're supposed to take out um, one-time expenses right. and contractual obligations that have expired, okay. and you can increase it by, you know, if, if a contractual obligation has increased. So what do you Based see? on 2020, though. Right. Oh, okay. So yes. you are basing it on 2020 by using 19s. Is the base. Start. Right. Okay. And okay. then you adjust it as necessary. Okay. So that's why health insurance is not last year's approved okay. amount of money. Right. Because we know that we didn't have the, the plan. We don't have those yes. plans. Yes. yes. Okay. And dispatch fees and answering is going up. Right. Yes. So you can see in the subtotals for each section where they're off. Um, where they either agree with last year or mm -hmm. um, or they don't. Dental, for for example, you know you're, you're back down to it. You know that's back to last year. Where are we? Dental? We're we're nowhere with dental. I, uh, the short answer is um, people have not responded. Um, mm -hmm. So that, to my mind, means that it's not flying. So okay. we can decide what to do with that within the amount of money that's budgeted. We can try to structure it in a different way, or you can abandon it if you want to propose with the budget committee. But we have to have a certain amount of employees on board. You have to get six. Have to and get we six. don't have six. Not at this point. Okay. I mean, you know, it's, I have two people that have not directly, I need to follow up with them again um, and, and see. But my guess is if they haven't responded but by now, they're really not interested. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, um, I mean, you can continue to play with the proposal and, you know, it's up to you how you know how you want to do that. They they didn't you know the the proposal didn't work. But that doesn't mean that we couldn't come up with something else that could work potentially. Okay. Do your recommendations to keep the money in there. 
That's really up to you. I think it's a conversation with the budget committee about where we're at, and um, you know, you can tell the budget committee that the board wants to continue, like, to keep the money in there and keep the conversation moving to see if you can work something out, okay. or that the board has decided it's just not going to work for this year, mm -hmm. and that they can reallocate it or take it out. So, so it's up to you. The minimum that you have is the dental. Um, requirement the, the people that you're getting the dental insurance from that's their requirement that you have to have at least six employees it's not actually even where we're getting the insurance from it's a law about you know insurance regulations and it applies to health care plans too okay. because you don't want just the people who need the plan you want to have a broader base of people to spread the risk out yeah yeah okay that's what it's about so it's okay. not a health trust it's not an individual regulation. It's a it's a state or federal insurance regulation. Okay. Right. And feel free to mention something that you think, you know, maybe could be different if, if it does match 19, that doesn't mean that, you know, mm -hmm. it should necessarily. Yeah, what about uh, paychecks? We've got it. Um, the service to the pays, excuse me, the uh, fee that we pay to paychecks. Is, it says we were going to put it up to 6500 but we kept it at 5000 for the default. Should that be up? No, because it's not a contract. That's where the whole idea of the default budget becomes a stranglehold. Okay. Is that you can't do that, but yet you have to pay the expense. Okay. So anything. So it's. So it's not just anything that's. Um, it's only things that we would have a contract for. That, or that we can decrease the default budget by, because we know we have more information. Well, right. So so that's where you like when you're having conversations about things that could reflect next year's budget when next year's budget is not yet approved and. You know, when, every time we bring up the default budget and how do we make this work if we end up in that default budget, mm -hmm. um, because of those, I call them strangleholds, um, it's, we're at, uh, not, we're at approximately $10,500 less than the 2019 budget. The default budget is about, you know, $10,500. Um, how about electricity for town hall? We've got the defaults at twelve thousand five hundred, but we were going to bring it down to twelve. I'm sorry. Say again. <laughs> um, the electricity for the town hall. Um, we were going to bring it down to twelve thousand because of the reduced fees for the LED lights, but we kept the default at twelve five. Can we bring the default down to twelve? Well, you could. So this is where, you know, y you could, for, so um, you get to keep things in default. Y you haven't signed that LED contract yet, you know, so y you don't know that you're going oh, to yet. Right. So there's this is that. town hall electricity, okay. Right, so if, if you end up with a default budget and you have a line that has more money than it absolutely needs to have, then, you know, that can help with some of the stranglehold lines. Right. Um, also, but, we don't know what water and sewer is going to do either. You know, right. They haven't, they haven't projected the increase, and that could offset it if it needed to, if you had more on electricity. Right. Yeah. Just because at this point, Hi, we don't know. Welcome back. Hi, Megan. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think that it's not cold. I kind of want it to be cold, but I also 
if it was freezing right now. What about electricity for the fire station then? So all the electric lines for the other buildings that got the LED conversion, the LED conversion is, um, it is represented in the proposed budget. You get to decide what to do with the operating budget. You know, we don't know exactly, I mean, there, there are projections of what's going to happen with our electric bill, mm -hmm. but they're projections at this point because we haven't seen it and we haven't done it. We haven't so had a year to if you want to lower the, the, the default budget in those lines to some degree, by all means, you're welcome to. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a little bit of a guess to, you know. Yeah, I see. I'd, love, I'd rather have a year but with the lighting to see what it brings before I would reduce something. That's a pretty, it seems pretty ambitious to me that it's going to drop by half. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be very nice. I don't know what I'm yeah. about LEDs. Me either. All I know is they seem to sell them in two colors, which is yellow and white. And I don't like either of them. <laughs> Any thoughts, Miles? Does he have it? Um, no. I'm looking at the, the spreadsheet um, on Google Sheets and it gets kind of messed up. Yeah. No, nothing jumps out at me. This might be another, uh, would payroll taxes, for, I thought that other, so like health insurance, if health insurance we know is going to go up, then we have to adjust the default budget. What about payroll taxes? If you knew that the law was going to change in such a way that they're going to increase the Social Security contributions for all the people who pay into Social Security or something like that, you absolutely could adjust um, payroll taxes for that, but so, but I don't, but that's not what I think you're saying. So. I think I'm saying I think we gave someone a raise, or we were projecting to give someone a raise. I think, and then so payroll taxes go. Oh, so if we didn't, if we wanted defaults anyway, they wouldn't get that raise anyway. Yeah, exactly. so that's, I see. That's yes, that's yes. Wow. Yeah. That solves that problem. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Everything's hypothetical until that magic day when the budget, yeah. you know, and all the other articles get, you know, right. voted on. Sorry, I'm almost done going through third time. station is a reason for grave concern mm -hmm. yeah. with the default budget. The whole transfer station. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hope we don't get a default.
Alright, looks good to me. Okay, so do we want to just make a motion to take it forward? The um, revenue and the default budget? I make a motion to approve the uh, revenue portion of the budget and the default budget. Alright, um, I'll second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. aye. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I'm so glad you're there and not here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Recreation. That's just a placeholder. Just a placeholder. In case you wanted it. Yeah. Space needs, that's a placeholder. Correct? No, we'll do that at the end. Unless you want to go into non public. For space you know, needs? Yeah. Yeah. I talked to you briefly about that. Oh, 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 sorry, yes, okay, yeah, we, we can, can do that, we can do that, we can do that with welfare. welfare, yes, 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 um, okay, so policy review, transfer station ordinance. I'm keeping that as a placeholder to remind us that, um, and maybe I'll remove it, I need to put it on the calendar that we need to schedule public hearings oh. way far out, closer to March, for that, okay. um, so there's that. Okay. The purchasing policy, mm -hmm. I have um, suggested as your next okay. policy to review. You sent something to us today um, about it, right? I did. I emailed yeah. it to you. I also printed it so I can grab it for you before you leave. So you, can have okay. so you sent it later, the, I, later in the okay. day. I okay, it. I can print it. Um, so um, the, big, the big discussion point is, is what are you comfortable with, with relinquishing to... Like, what is, the P, what is the new PO limit going to be? So um, I put in there, um, right now they have, um, they can spend up to $200 on their own and then um, $500 with what's called a limited purchase order um, with me. So, so like a department head and I can together approve a purchase order for up to $500 for a budgeted expense. It's not something we've been doing. Um, I, you know, we, we can. T you know, there's a lot of talk about process that we should, and and, and when we would use these different mechanisms. Mm -hmm. um, I'm proposing five hundred dollars on their own and a thousand dollars through this limited purchase order system. If we want to really work with the department heads to um, talk about process with that, um, but that the other side of this is is that you know it's like a bona fide emergency. You know, we've got to get more. The, the reason I prioritize this is because we're continuing to get dinged on our audit to some degree for um, expenses that are, um, they get purchase orders after the fact. And that's all the time. Right. So, so the trade off. all departments. Well, right. So the trade off with upping the limit is you've got to get your paperwork done and approvals done ahead of time before you buy things, unless it really is a bona fide emergency. So, so um, the p purchasing policy will also say that you cannot make any purchases without an approved PO, either for to, you or for a hospital. Right, either that way or through this one. And, if that right. is, and then if it's a real emergency, they at least have to make a phone call to you. You know, and you have to have the heads up. But we're seeing it, it's gotten really lax, and it seems like this year's been an exceptional amount of that happening so so it's going to come with a um you know an, you know we, we need an integration kind of a um an implementation meeting with department heads absolutely so we can work on that but okay. that's what i'm proposing for your next all right thing to chew on sounds good okay so we will do that the next one um maybe if you can on the um Transfer station one, maybe put a dash and say um, public, public, hearing. A, a public hearing or something. So then we know that um, that's done, but waiting for a public hearing. Yeah, I'll come back to the next meeting um, or, or work via email to schedule um, to see what you. Th I, I need to look for where, where the time frame is and then I can suggest dates to you all. Okay, sounds we'll good. We'll work on that. All right. So, okay, town administration, board members, activities, and updates. So, I have, tomorrow night I have um, conservation, yes. conservation meeting at the library. Wednesday I have, um, oops, that's October, November. I have a budget. 
on Thursday sewer water. I will likely be at the sewer water meeting. Unfortunately, apparently the first or the the next Stratford Regional Planning Committee meeting, I will be going on vacation that day on December fifth. So I will not be able to go to that. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I'll be able to go to the one after that. All right. And I'm assuming Miles, you're going to be staying home and getting better. Yeah, let me, I'll just be brief here. Um, tax bills are going out today. Okay. So look for those. Um, the planning board approved the um, the subdivision on Silver Street. Um, it got conditional approval. So um, that's going on. Um, there's a minor lot line adjustment that was um, re-approved. It was a minor change. I will be with you at at least um, two of those meetings this week. I'll be there for the conservation and, and the post budget. Okay. Um, I'm not, you know, I'll try to get to the water sewer yet. I'm not sure about that one. That's not my number one priority, so if you can go to that, that would be great. Just to get us keep I'll try there. there. Yeah, because I, I, and I got the other two as well, so. Yeah. So maybe. Um, I went to the Municipal Association Conference, you know, last week, and there, I learned a lot, and there were some interesting things and, um, to take away from that that I think we can apply here. Um, we'll talk about it at another time. You'll see me, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be bringing things up that I learned there, but um, I just wanted to thank you for that because it was a good experience. It's always a good experience. Good. Yeah. Good. Okay, so... What do we have the folder? So I think that these things, um, you were to sign this, I think, for there just for me and Miles to sign. This is the tax? Yes. So yes. I signed that. Okay. Um, this is the uh, travel restrictions, official language so signed. So you already approved that. Yeah, yeah. And this is the speed control regulations. Yep. So these are here for you to sign, Miles, when you get a chance. Okay. And then this is a letter that we're going to send to someone about uh, them needing a building permit. Yep, I've already signed it. Great. Yep. Um, this is a purchase order for Microsoft Office for one laptop for $250. Okay, so um, I sent, I believe I sent an email to this group about, about this. Um, if not, I, I apologize. I've intended it anyway. Um, Tom LaBelle has worked with the school, which has agreed to give us two laptops. Um, if you want two laptops, um, they will be fitted with Windows 10, so we won't have that problem. One could go to George. Um, the other can be here in the office for um, primarily Tom, but it could um, be here for meetings as needed as well. And we can set up different logins and different user IDs. And so that purchase order, so there's no charge for the computers. Um, the purchase order just represents the cost to put Microsoft Office on the one laptop for the office. Okay. You did um, send an email, by the way. Okay, yeah. good, thank you. Um, good to know, thanks. <laughs> um, so I haven't talked to George about whether or not he feels he needs office. I, you know, he's not typically one to produce documents that I'm aware of or not mm -hmm. in great volume. So I don't know if, you know, Google's sufficient for him or whether mm -hmm. he needs office. I just intended that one to be for the office laptop. Okay, we can go with that for now, and he can if he's getting a laptop. I think that's ninety percent of a positive thing for him and then if he needs it maybe next year we can get that for him. They are older machines. Yeah. You know, they are used older machines. So I just want to be upfront about that that, you know, we're probably fine for twenty twenty, I'm sure, mm -hmm. but it's probably something to budget for in twenty one to replace them. We ought to just keep it on our radar. Our radar. They're not really new even though they're new to us. Yeah. Well I'm concerned do you know what the specs are? I don't, but I can get them for you. I'm just concerned. I don't want. So this is going to be replacing your desktop. Right? No, no. Oh, okay. No, okay. no, no. Okay. So Tom Bell and I talked about that, and 
you know, there's some pros and cons about that, but when he said he could get laptops, it just seemed to negate the whole need to replace the desktop. So this is going to replace Tom Clark's personal laptop that he's using here. Will it be, a, is it going to be a big, like, decrease in speed for him? Absolutely not. Okay. So what he's using now is, is it's, kind it's, of crappy. It's, yes. Okay, it's, great. It's, well, it's, and that's great because um, it's something that needed to happen anyway for him because it's an old laptop. So um, it came about because um, he reminded me that he still doesn't have printer access. Um, but we don't want to have a personal computer on the network. Yeah. So this kind of solves a lot of problems mm -hmm. that he can have a laptop for here at work when he needs it that can print. Um, oh. 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 That's my kiddo. We oh. can ignore her. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> Um, so we can, he can set, the laptop could be um, printable to the front office, but that it can have different user IDs so that, you know, I can have the user ID, Selma, if she needs it while mm -hmm. she's here, can have her own ID so that we're not in each other's stuff, mm -hmm. but we can all have functionality. Nice. We never use, need to use it at the same time, so it works right. out really well. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. All right. I'll approach it over 163. 1636 to Tom LaBelle for Microsoft Office for one laptop and you have $250. I'll second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. And I've got a PO here for, um, I'll just do it, um, with purchase order 1533 for the cemetery to Janetta's Landscaping for um, new town, old town mowing and trimming in the amount of $1,340. All right, I'll second that. Any discussion? Do you know if that's the last one for this year? I would guess so. I so it might have been know. the cleaning of the, you know, getting leaves out and all of that. I don't know. She said mowing, right? It says mowing and mowing trimming. And trimming. Mm -hmm. Invoice, well, there's an invoice, oh. so let me just look at that. Um, it just says mow on the date was October 2nd. Oh, because I just uh, saw that yesterday. Yeah, so, so it's we'll not be getting new. another one. Yeah. Caroline, could you please pay this bill when you are doing bills? Yeah. <laughs> so we'll probably get one more for cleaning. I yeah. Because I yeah. saw them well, there yesterday. Saw them right there. Yes, yeah, the day before one. Mm -hmm. All right. So okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Okay. Okay. Um, so community input. No. Okay. We need to go into um, non-public, and after that we will be leaving. Yes. yes. Okay. So I make a motion that we go. Am I might do it through the welfare one. Whichever one you want to start. Okay. With. I'll do the um, non-public for RSA 91A32 for welfare. Roll call. Jessica. Uh -huh. yes. Denise. Yes. Miles. Thank you. All right, Bernie.